James Dorsey is a senior fellow at the S. Rajaratnam School of International Studies at Singapore's Nanyang Technological University. He joins us now live from Singapore. Thank you so much for being with us on the program. Now, listening to that clip from the UN, it does sound like all of the parties involved know that this is a long and complicated process. But with this latest attack suspending talks yet again, how does that impact the will of the international community to keep going? Well, I think the problem is that, you know, all the players at the table are involved in violating uh, the agreements that have been made. Now, clearly, uh, the forces of uh, Khalifa Haftar are the ones that uh, are violating it the most in terms of breaking ceasefires or not allowing ceasefires to really take effect. But fact of the matter is that as long as all the power, all the different powers, whether that's uh, on the Haftar side, uh, the Egyptians, the uh, Emiratis primarily, possibly the French, and on the Turkish side, uh, on the uh, side of the uh, UN-recognized government, Turkey and, and possibly Italy, as long as you're getting arms supplies going in, you're probably going to see violations of the ceasefire. Speaking about the arms uh, getting into Libya, we know that there is an arms embargo, uh, and the UN did say those who uh, breach that embargo should be held accountable. Do you think that uh, people will continue to breach that arms embargo that's in place? Most probably, yes. First of all, we live in a world in which international law no, no longer counts for much and might is right. Second of all, you have paralysis in the Security Council. So one side or the other is going to, uh, going to veto. And, of course, it's the parties themselves that are involved in the violations of the arms embargo. Now, what impact will uh, this recent attack on the ports have on Libya itself, considering it's a major gateway for things like food and fuel? Well, obviously, if the uh, Haptar forces were able to cut off the port, and that isn't, uh, we're not there yet, then that would be a major blow to the uh, Tripoli government. Having said that, I think that what we're going to see is continued fighting. And fact of the matter is that this is an offensive that Haftar launched in April of last year in the belief that this would be quick and, uh, and, and successful. And we're now uh, nine months further, and uh, it, he has been able to control, get control of some parts of Tripoli, but he does not have control of the city. Um, now, the GNA issued a statement to say they would respond firmly to the attack at the appropriate time. What do you think that means? It remains to be seen. Clearly, we've already seen that they're not willing to sit down with, uh, at the negotiating table as long as the violations continue. I think a lot will depend on, um, in part, about the Turkish position in this. Obviously, uh, what you've seen in the arrangements for a uh, European monitoring of the flow of arms and trying to intercept, that when it comes to the um, airline or the air routes, they're only monitoring, they're not going to intervene, which basically gives Haftar's backers, backers uh, a significant leeway unless uh, Turkey provides the sort of anti-air defense that uh, the uh, Tripoli government would need. James, thank you so much for that insight. That's James Dorsey joining us live from Singapore.